a bagel with cream cheese, yogurt and fruit, or bacon and eggs. One of these breakfast options will keep your body in a state of fat burning, while the other two will encourage your body to make fat. Which is which might surprise you, and I will share the details in this week's video. Hi, I'm Dr. Becky from drbeckyfitness.com. I'm a college instructor of the science of nutrition. When you are eating for weight loss, you want to choose foods that will digest slowly and provide sustained energy so you can avoid fatigue and hunger. Proteins and fats take longer to digest than carbohydrates. Carbs, especially sugar and refined or processed carbs like breads and cereals, digest quickly and they spike insulin, which is the hormone that pushes calories or fuels from the foods that you eat into storage. So insulin is literally your fat storing hormone. So with just that little bit of information, we can start to evaluate these three breakfast options. Bagels have a reputation for being healthy that they do not deserve. Bagels are refined grains that have a high glycemic index, which means that they spike insulin, which is that fat storing hormone. When you put cream cheese, which is mostly fat, on top of this refined carbohydrate, you have a recipe for disaster because the insulin that is spiked from eating this refined carb not only pushes sugar into your fat cells, but also the fatty acids that come from the cream cheese. So with this meal, you're ingesting a lot of energy and probably about 300 calories worth of energy, but because that, uh, that available energy is quickly pushed out of your blood and into your energy storage areas, which are your fat cells, it's no longer easily accessed. So your brain turns on hunger and cravings, which is basically re a request for you to eat. Um, you know, so your brain is, is saying, you know, give me something that I can burn without having to go to all the trouble of pulling fat out of fat storage. You know, I, I remember when I was in high school and one year I had the latest lunch, which was something around 1 p.m. And, um, you know, now at the time, uh, my breakfast, like most girls growing up in the 80s, was a bowl of cereal. And of course, it wasn't anything near uh, a healthy bowl of cereal. Uh, I think I used to eat those Rice Krispie uh, things that were chocolate. I think they were called Cocoa Krispies. But um, anyway, uh, it, it, whatever it was, it was an extremely refined cereal. And I remember that uh, the class I had before lunch, my stomach would always start growling really loud and, and it was embarrassing and everyone could hear it. And I used to dread when it would be quiet, like when we'd have a test because it was so loud. And I remember trying everything to keep my stomach from growling. And one of my strategies was to increase my cereal intake from one bowl to two or, or maybe even three. So I would try to stuff myself with food in the morning to keep hunger away. Now I look back at that and I think, oh my gosh, what a terrible strategy because first of all, it didn't work and secondly, um, I was trying to fill up with the quickest digesting foods on the planet, right? Refined carbohydrates. So the main difference between eating uh, a few refined carbs and a lot of refined carbs is mostly how much insulin your body is forced to produce. So by eating two bowls of cereal instead of one, my pancreas had to pump out more insulin and the sugar from those carbs made it into my fat cells just as quickly. So eating more refined carbs in hopes of staving off hunger is not a strategy that will benefit you. Two donuts are never better than one donut. Um, same with bagels. So a bagel and cream cheese is not something that I recommend if weight loss is your goal. So let's look at a different popular breakfast, which is yogurt and fruit. Uh, if you follow me here on YouTube or my blog, you know that I don't often recommend yogurt. Uh, the reason is mostly because it's so hard to find a yogurt that is not filled with sugar. Uh, for instance, I picked up this Greek yogurt in the grocery store. It has 19 grams of carbohydrates, 17 grams of sugar, and 12 of those are actually added sugar. This is not health food. Um, now you might think that if you eat this with some fruit, you'll make your breakfast healthier. Well, I have an entire 
a video on, on how fruit affects your diet, and I encourage you to watch that if, after this one if you have questions about eating fruit. But what it really comes down to is how well your metabolism is performing. Fruit contains a natural sugar called fructose, which is uh, processed by your liver, and your liver turns fructose into fat, which I know sounds bad, but in a person with a strong metabolism, that's not a problem because their body can easily pull that fat out of storage and burn it when it needs energy. But if you are someone who has trouble losing weight, then you may have a metabolic issue, something like insulin resistance, um, that blocks fat release. So now you eat this yogurt with hidden sugars, uh, your insulin goes up, and then you follow that with fruit, which your liver converts to fat, and fat burning is not happening. Now, I'm not against yogurt, and I know some people like to make their own yogurt, which is fine. Uh, you can buy acceptable yogurts, uh, but you do have to hunt for them. Uh, I would suggest that you look in the health food aisle of your grocery store to see if you can find a full fat yogurt with no added sugar. Uh, if you eat that with maybe a few seeds, like maybe some chia seeds or some raw sunflower seeds sprinkled on top instead of fruit, you'll avoid the insulin spike and um, you'll find that hunger stays away. So that is an option for you if you enjoy yogurt. Now let's look at bacon and eggs. What we have here is protein and fat with very little carbohydrates. This breakfast is going to digest slowly and it's not going to spike insulin. Remember that when insulin stays low, your body is not storing fat, so fat is able to be released from your fat cells. So a breakfast that consists of fat and some protein is going to help you extend the, the low insulin fat burning state that your body naturally falls into thanks to the fact that you fasted overnight, right? Breakfast is literally breaking a fast. Um, you know, we, the, the prevailing wisdom not so long ago was that we needed to eat carbohydrates in the morning because they give us energy. Well, yes, that's true, but so do dietary fats. And because dietary fats digest slowly and they don't impact your insulin, your body receives sustained energy that is not as easily stored as fat. This would have been a much better breakfast for me to have in high school because it would have kept hunger away longer. Now, before I leave bacon and eggs, I have to respond to the elephant in the room, and that is saturated fats. Saturated fats have certainly gotten a bad reputation. Part of that is because uh, logic would make us believe that eating fat makes you fat. However, um, a liver function known as lipogenesis is one of the main ways your body makes the fat that is inside of you. And that process is stimulated by a high carbohydrate diet, not fat. In fact, when we look at the research that's not sponsored by drug companies, which unfortunately can carry a bias, we see a very poor relationship between saturated fats and heart disease. Here is a systematic review of the literature that came to the conclusion that current evidence does not clearly support cardiovascular guidelines that encourage uh, low uh, consumption of total saturated fats. And systematic reviews like this one are good studies to go by because their purpose is to collect and analyze multiple research studies. So you get an overview of multiple studies and that overrides the biased research that might be out there due to a special interest like, for instance, selling medications. So bacon is a saturated fat. Uh, it can be healthy, but you do want to look for bacon with no nitrates uncured and no sugar added. So of these three options, the one with protein and fat wins out over the refined carbs and hidden sugars. Um, but I will add that there is another option available to you if you have trouble losing weight, and that is to skip breakfast altogether. That is a fat loss strategy called intermittent fasting. I have a video here on YouTube that walks you through three ways to do it, including the easy method, which is a baseline strategy that all members of my weight loss coaching program benefit from. I will link to that video from this one so that you can learn more about intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching. Please click 
the subscribe button, and I will be back next week with a new video to help you reach your goal. Thanks.